Nick T, frequently referred to as the mouthpiece of the Federal Reserve over at the Wall Street Journal, just flagged something quite dangerous for markets. And we need to talk about it because this is something that I personally have not been paying as much attention to as I should. It is a leading indicator, which is dangerous and not good because the indicator is not going in the direction that we want. It is a leading indicator on data that is usually a lagging indicator. In other words, by the time we usually see this lagging indicator show bad things, we're already deep into a recession. But now we can start seeing some leading tells that maybe we're heading into a not so great environment. Now I'm going to show in this video what Nick T flagged first, but I've gone a lot deeper on what Nick T flagged and it just gets worse the deeper I go. So let's analyze this together. So what do we have? First, this is what Nick T flagged on Twitter. He flagged this segment of the ZipRecruiter Q2 earnings call. So this is a job placement company. And what I did is I went to two other job placement companies, uh, the company that owns Monster and the company that owns Indeed. And I went to those holding companies earnings calls to see what they're saying about labor. And I'll tell you, it's all not fantastic. You ready for this? Here we go. So this is ZipRecruiter. Employers continue to respond to enduring macroeconomic uncertainty with caution. This enduring, not, not a great phrase, right? If we're really bottoming out and soft landing, ning, 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 whatever, then we should be seeing a trough in earnings and this sort of U shape of earnings, right? And we come out of that, that pain point. But right here, we see an enduring macro level of uh, uncertainty. In addition, the number of job openings and employers' willingness to pay for these job openings has been declining significantly from the peaks of 2021 and 2022. And this trend is consistent amongst both small and enterprise and medium businesses, geographies, and industries. So in other words, everywhere, everything is slowing down in labor. Now, this is really interesting because we just got a strong labor report. And so a lot of people are like, oh, but Kevin, we just had a strong BLS jobs report. The problem, though, is we and we knew this going into this crisis. Jobs reports are lagging data. Everybody and their grandmother knows that jobs reports are lagging data. This is something that I flagged way back in December of 2021 that like, hey, the way to go into a recession is you, you have a lot of unemployment. The problem is you don't know that you're going to have a lot of unemployment until you're in a recession. So I was going through this with course members this morning, along with real estate and some fundamental analysis that we were doing. Uh, and uh, I, I noticed there were some software engineers in the group who've been saying, hey, like usually I can get a job very quickly. All of a sudden, I can't get a job very quickly anymore. And then I think about the BLS labor report and I'm like, oh my gosh, the BLS labor report actually told us that where people were able to get jobs wasn't necessarily in retail, hospitality, or tech anymore. Where people were getting jobs was in education and healthcare, which is actually usually late stage cycle employment. Also not good. So in other words, you're seeing ZipRecruiter flag issues. You're seeing people start flagging issues. You're seeing uh, uh, individuals on uh, teamblind.com start indicating that there are Amazon silent layoffs and other companies like Microsoft and Dell potentially cutting over a thousand employees. How more of these layoff rounds are coming now, but they're just not being covered in the media, which is really interesting. Some are calling this the, uh, the silent layoffs really just a way of attrition. In other words, the companies tighten workforce policies, squeeze people out, and then they're not really doing a layoff. People are just quitting. And then the companies aren't rehiring. And so putting all this together, I'm like, okay, all right, let's get some actual data on this. Now I wanna show you the other two earnings calls too, but there's some concerning pieces of data that I also got from doing some more research. I'm a big fan of research and charts, so I like to go deep on this stuff. And look at this. Okay, this is an interesting chart. So let me explain this one first. So the white line tells you the unemployment rate. The red line shows you the moving average of the unemployment rate. And what you're looking here uh, or what you're looking for is what in stocks we might call like the golden cross, right? Where, where you move above the moving average, <laughs> like you finally break out of a declining trend. Well, in unemployment, this is like the opposite, okay? This is bad. So take a look at this. 
This right here was about 2007. So this would be about May 2007. You get the unemployment rate slightly above the moving average of unemployment, okay? Then uh, you get recession, obviously. And then in the recession, you get this massive spike. So that's 2007. Look at 2000, uh, well, the end of 2000 and the beginning of 2001 right here. What did you get? Unemployment rate spikes above the moving average, which precedes explosion in unemployment. So you get that here, you get that here. Okay, you ready for this? Uh, well, COVID was was unique. Uh, this isn't, we don't have to so much pay attention to COVID because everything kind of happened at the same time. That's not to say that time was different. Like it obviously wasn't, it just happened so rapidly. You didn't really get much of a lead on that. Duh, the economy shut down. Okay, that's not a surprise. Look at this folks, what just happened in the last two months. The unemployment rate ticked up above the moving average again. And combine this with somebody uh, like the Fed, uh, you know, yesterday, who was at Hawker yesterday, the VP of the Fed, he goes, look, we think unemployment's going to go to four, maybe four and a half percent. Okay, but every time historically the unemployment rate has risen one percent, so from like three and a half to four and a half, we go on to rise another at least one percent, if not more. So that's a problem. But not only is that a problem, unemployment destroys a lot of things. It destroys lending. It leads to more personal bankruptcies, more business bankruptcies. It leads to credit defaults. Credit's obviously at an all-time high. I don't actually think credit is in a horrible situation right now because the percentage of people's disposable income, in other words, people's capacity to pay their debt is very high. But that changes when joblessness comes in, right? So that's, that's all of a sudden where you compound the indicators in a bad way. Now all of a sudden you take bad jobs data Add that to high debts, now your capacity to pay off debt skyrockets. Now, we don't exactly know when this unemployment surge could occur, but we would expect that it would be in a higher interest rate environment, so within the next year, which is what the inversion of the yield curve, the difference between the 10 and 2, has been flagging. It's also worth noting that stocks basically hit their peak around June 19th, and you know what's kind of crazy about that? Is the inverted yield curve started steepening right after June 19th, like the Monday thereafter, the inverted yield curve became less inverted. In plain English, usually when that curve steepens, things get bad and things have gotten worse in the stock market and that curve is steepening. At the same time, now we're having these potentially legitimate employment concerns. But what other leading indicators can we look at? Well, let's go into, what is this one? This is Randstadt. Uh, this is another employment agency. I can't remember if this was Monster or Indeed. Uh, and then I have the other company as well. But these are the parent companies. So look at some of the things they've seen or, or are saying here. Uh, so um, we found ourselves in Q1 with a decline. We, and, and these folks are like Dutch, okay? So, so the translations here aren't great. And we do see no signs of that stabilization and normalization. <laughs> in other words... It's still bad and it's continuing to be bad. They also talk about these comps to the great resignation where like you had a lot of people quit and then they find new jobs. That was the great resignation. That gave them a, a big boost because people were looking for new jobs. But now we're coming down from the great resignation. So the comps are terrible for these companies. But what are they talking about? Well, they're talking about manufacturing getting hit the hardest, especially in autos. Obviously we're seeing that. A lot of autos either laying off or quite frankly going bankrupt. Uh, France was the only positive area they saw, but Germany, Italy, the United States, Netherlands, all negative. Slower hiring environment for permanent placements. This is very similar to what you're seeing with ZipRecruiter. Automotive has been particularly challenging. No changes of any sort. Instead, we're just deteriorating across the board. Uh, so, uh, you know, listen to this. So they're talking about like, hey, we think we'll be okay as long as demand comes back, but listen to this, if demand comes back. I underlined that in red there. Uh, they also said uh, permanent job placements came down significantly more than we're seeing in Q1. Okay, that is worsening. Things are getting worse, not better. Like I've been looking for bearish stuff and I'm like, no, that's not bearish, that's not bearish. Like, I feel like I'm going through a newspaper, right? Uh, oh, except like more up to date stuff. I feel like I'm doing this through a newspaper. I'm like, no, no, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. Now I'm like, uh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, like, I know this is where people are like, oh, 
That's it. Kevin's going to flip-flop again. Look, I just react to data. That's, I react to data. And I look every single day for data. And I haven't seen anybody cover all three of these earnings reports or whatever. I got flagged to this by Nick T. Nobody else has been talking about it. And so I'm like, let me look at the other companies. Let me also look at some Bank of America reports on this. You want to see what the Bank of America reports are saying? Okay, wait for this. Ready for this? All right, so what do we have right here? Labor momentum has been cooling and in a negative territory for 15 straight months. And when we look at this chart where basically the light blue line is under the zero level, look at where we were under the zero level before the dot-com recession, before the 08 recession, going into the pandemic, uh, that could have been a coincidence or we were setting up for another recession, uh, the current levels. Notice how in expansionary times, like this number goes positive and it's not. In fairness, this is really murky. Here's another Bank of America piece just out that talks about how, hey, maybe we could actually see more wage increases, which would create more potentially inflation and services as maybe we're underestimating how much the market could retighten. But that's assuming a soft landing. What if we go the opposite direction using this chart from Bank of America, we're actually potentially going in the worst direction. Well, to get a little bit more of a leading indicator, I like to now jump over to, let's see here, that's Randstadt. Let's go to Recruit. I think Recruit is Indeed and Randstadt is Monster. I'm, I'm not exactly sure which, but they're all recruiting firms, okay? So what does this one say? This is now a third company. So we saw bad news from ZipRecruiter. We saw bad news from Randstadt. And uh, now we're going to look at uh, news from Recruit. I don't want to poison the well here. Okay, as you know, global HR matching business is heavily impacted by economic environment and therefore very important for us to continue investing in the future. While conservatively, assuming a downturn followed by a period of economic stagnation. Uh, what? That doesn't sound very good. A downturn followed by stagnation. Sounds terrible, okay? What do we have over here? Historically speaking, the type job market has shown gradual improvement over the past year as we assumed. However, in comparison to the 2008 and 2009 recessions, where approximately 2.7 million jobs were lost over a two-year period, the number of jobs already lost in 2022 was 2.5 million. So in other words, we're at the same levels as 2008-2009. What the F? It has been very challenging to predict the speed of this decline. It was also difficult to predict companies' willingness to spend on hiring that it would decline at a rate faster than the decline in job openings. Based on such rapid change, we paused hiring in our HR business uh, in October of last year, and in March, we announced a workforce reduction. Okay, this is not good. We intend to provide fiscal year guidance again when outlook becomes clearer. So in other words, Recruit is withdrawing guidance. Indeed is withdrawing guidance. Uh, you've got uh, expecting a decline of headcounts through attrition rather than mass layoffs, which aligns with Blind's indication that, you know, we're getting these silent layoffs. This is not good. These are leading indicators of problems that we haven't been paying attention to before. And I want to highlight them here as like, hey, well, I'm a big fan of volatile Nike swoosh, okay? We get Fibonacci retracements in the stock market, yada, yada, yada. I think lending is actually going to expand rather than contract. That's all fine and dandy. I believe all of that stuff. But what if we actually end up getting a in jobs that transpires in 2024? Well, then we need to be prepared for such a potential environment where the unemployment rate skyrockets. And everybody sort of has to ask themselves, what are you doing to make sure that you're going to survive Massive layoff rounds, right? It's scary. Uh, now, look, practically, what, what is my thesis of all of this? Well, practically, I think that uh, patience is definitely important for the real estate market. Uh, my real estate startup, I think, is going to be in a phenomenal position to take advantage of whatever happens. Uh, that's House Hack. We'll be raising from non-accredited investors probably within the next two or three weeks here, which is very exciting. I can't wait to announce that. Go to househack.com. Uh, drop your phone number and your email if you want a heads up. Otherwise, just wait for the videos, househack.com. But anyway, uh, what's incredible here is I look at this as, okay, look, it's either soft landing and we could go do wedge deals all day long or people start panic selling and we buy those deals. Like either way, real estate startup, totally fine. Uh, from a financial point of view, like financial news media, that's already in a recession. Every single finance news 
portion has seen, you know, sort of a, a decline, which comes with sort of the cycle. That makes sense. Uh, that's not much of a surprise. We've been dealing with that since the beginning of 2022. Uh, I actually think there's probably more demand now for potentially like licensed financial services. So stay tuned. We've got some announcements coming up, uh, maybe even tomorrow by CPI day. So that'll be cool. Uh, so then I also look at, okay, what about software? Well, remember how software engineers were potentially complaining about not being able to find a job that could actually be accelerated by AI, which means on one hand, you could have economic expansion with layoffs. That would be weird, right? That's basically AI making certain programmers more productive, but closing the door to others. That would be bad for people, but probably okay for the economy, right? You could get through that. Unless the sign of these software engineers not being able to get work is a sign of a broader economic pullback. I, I obviously don't know yet what the answer is, but uh, my take is that we wanna pay attention to this very, very closely. You should subscribe for more information and more updates on exactly this. I don't care if it's bad news or good news. I'm always going to do my best to provide value to you. So hopefully you uh, you regularly uh, come back, check in on these videos, share the videos. I really appreciate you. I just do my best with the data I've got and I keep looking for more leading indicators. I think those are very, very important. And this one, not great. So we're gonna pay attention to those companies as well. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, cheers, I got the beautiful RuneScape cup here and uh, I guess I'm entering the uh, the wilderness. See what I did there? Anyway, sorry, I had to do that. Uh, hey, when are they going to come out with a new Splinter Cell, by the way? And can you please leave a comment if you're seeing any of this kind of joblessness or any issues? Thanks so much. Goodbye. Now, I want you to know this. When it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money. And if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced by artificial intelligence. If you can master AI by starting on the ground floor, let's go.